Life Lesson. This is Tina Frazier coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Wednesday, October 31st, 2018. Happy Halloween, everybody. It's kind of a dreary, rainy day here in Columbus, Ohio, and um, I have the day off. Um, I took the day off mainly to prepare for trick-or-treat, and uh, unfortunately for our trick-or-treat scheduled tonight between 6 and 8.30 or so, it's, we're supposed to have heavy rain, so I don't know how many trick-or-treaters we're actually going to have, but um, anyway, I took today off. So this is my second installment of um, the second installment of my estate sale haul. This is going to be the whip parade of the um, works in progress that I picked up at the estate sale I went to about two weeks ago. Um, so I don't know kind of where to start. I kind of went through the whips last night just to make sure that I could find the patterns and stuff. I think there's only one or two things that I couldn't find the patterns for. So I have a I have a whip. I'm not sure exactly what to do with it. Um, I think the, the smaller one, or I may just keep it for the fabric. I don't know. I may see if, um, I may just put it out there for one of you guys. Um, if you guys decide that you want it, um, go ahead and let me know in the comments below <laughs> and I'll, you know, I'll make it, make a deal with you. Maybe I'll just send it to you for free or something. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of, um, there's, I think two, two smaller pieces that I couldn't find the patterns for anywhere in my stash, or at least I didn't know where to look, but, um, bear with me just a minute. Remember, um, those two bags in my other video that I had showed you, um, this, I got them all into this one bag. So this is the bag of whips that I have to show you today. And I will be adjusting it. As you can see, I'm in, back in my craft room for today. I have the blinds in my window kind of behind me open and the blinds behind the camera open, um, to get a little more natural light in this room. Um, I don't know how much filming I'll actually do in here. Um, if I can get some of this stuff like cleared out and just sorted out, um, you know, I'd ideally like to make this, if I was like not working from, if I was not working or, you know, working from home a lot more, I'd be sitting in this room because there's a lot more natural light with the two windows in here. Um, but uh, anyway, so let me, um, I just kind of wanted to introduce you. This is the Bag of Wicks. So I will show you. You can see all that stuff in there, you guys. There's all kinds of whips in here. And uh, so this might be a long video. Um, and I'm going to be adjusting the camera angle a little bit. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it like this and move around for you. Um, anyway, let me cover up my um, laptop um, thing for it. There we go. I'm covering up my laptop well. Let me actually use the bigger one to kind of cover up the keyboard too. Um, I'm going to try and cover up my laptop because I'm going to be laying stuff on my laptop as I go through this stuff um, to show you. So we can kind of go from there. So without further ado, actually I'm going to turn this camera this way a little bit and angle it down. There we go. If you see me looking off this way, it's because my laptop is this way. I'm trying not to focus on that. I'll try and look at look here. Um, it's going to be a little odd for me, but um, yeah. So it's a little rainy day. I'm got my Ohio roller derby shirt on. Um, I'm just in sweats today because I'm not at work, and uh, we're kind of going from there. All right. So without further ado, this is my estate sale haul part. Two, this is the whip parade um, the lady whose um, estate sale I went to you know as I said the group the group that puts on these estate sales is called sale by Holly I will um, put their links below the link for their information below if you happen to be in central Ohio and you're looking for ways to get into a state sale you know into shopping estate sales um, they usually send out an email about Tuesday or Wednesday every week with the estate sales coming up the following the um, coming up weekend I have one in my inbox that I have to go look at now um, but the estate sales usually happen they start on Friday morning and then if there are two day state two day estate sales on Saturday the stuff usually the stuff that's left usually ends up going for half price well because we were going to be out of town on on Saturday I went ahead and just went Friday morning on my day off on the 19th 
of October. So this is this is all the whips that I picked up from the estate sale. Most of these, I think, one of them was in a bag that was marked four dollars. Like quite a few of them were in a bag marked four dollars. Um, another one was in a bag marked two or four bucks, and one of them was this is all alone marked two bucks. So for probably about ten bucks, I got quite a few whips. I didn't count them, so I can't tell you exactly how many I have, but I do have quite a few, as you can tell by this bag. This bag is plumb full of stuff. So, I'm going to leave the best one for last. The best one. This is the best one out of everything right here. And it's stuck. What is it stuck? Where is it? But this one is the best one out of everything I got. This one was kind of stuffed somewhere all alone, and it was marked two bucks. So I got this for two bucks. Um, so this is going to be the last one I show you because that was the one that really kind of blew me away. Um, all right, I'll just pull this out. This was a kit that was in some of the stuff that I got. It's the Christmas Goose Counted Cross Stitch. Um, this is a Hallmark kit. I'm going to save this for a while, but it has everything. The kit's unopened. It has the... Um, finishing hoop. It has the trim that they used around it. So this might be kind of fun to stitch. So I got Christmas Goose. So yeah, that's going to go in my, um, oops, packs. That's going to go in my projects to come because that was not opened. So, um, put that one in, put that one in. In some of this stuff, I actually have um, in one of the um, the plastic the plastic sewing tub that I have. Actually, um, I'm gonna ch well no, because then then you'll get a glare. Um, the plastic sewing box that I have had th two or three more of these these floss organizers. I've had these before; they're really nice. So I have three of them. I don't know what I don't know what. Um, whip these things go to these flat these threads and there was also some of these loose things i'm gonna probably i don't know if i'll keep a hold of um this dmc 498 um this is an old dmc 498 and this dmc 321 these are old old dmc um things you're not going to be able to yeah, you're not going to be able to do that. But these are old flosses. Um, there's also a DMC um, 436. Um, I will probably, I don't know if I'll keep these. And then these, there's just some loose floss. Um, you'll see one of the um, organizing systems that the lady used when she got, when she received kits that came with floss, she was using these, um, these little discs. She'd punch holes in them and then write the, um, she'd write the, the color number on them and then um, she'd put these on a big metal ring so she could have that you'll see that um, you'll see her organize organization system and uh, with one of the whips that I found um, but yeah so uh, this is just kind of generic floss I haven't figured out yet exactly what I'm doing with this with the this little extra floss that I don't really need um, so as I alluded to earlier now there's another skein. This is DMC 319. It's a green, like a Christmas green. All right. There's a couple of things in here that were finished, completely finished, and I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure where they came from, what patterns they were, or whatnot. But these were these were kind of together. So this is the first one that I found that was completely finished. Um, it's on a cream Ada. I believe it's 14 count. I'm not sure what pattern this came from. But, um, you know, she has really nice stitching. And uh, you can see the back is, like, pristine. Her backs are pristine. Her stitching was pristine. So I have this piece. Um, not really sure, you know, what if I would do anything with it. It doesn't match anything in my decor, um, so I'm not really sure. Sorry to keep looking away at the, at the uh, laptop camera. I should put the laptop somewhere else. But uh, anyway, so we have that. And then the second piece is also a quilt block. I'm not sure what pattern this came out of. If anybody can identify it, that would be great. This is kind of pretty. I don't know. I may actually, 
I may actually finish this maybe uh, um, Priscillify it you know like Chelsea and Priscilla I may Priscillify it finish it um, do kind of like a, a scrapbook finish I don't know and uh, maybe hang it up on my desk at work that might be kind of pretty um, but yeah this is a, a quilt block that she had finished and as you can see look at the back the back is stunning it's clean probably this is a lot I've been stitching since 1989 and I don't think my backs have ever come out this clean this is pristine though so yeah so we have these two finishes um, if anybody can identify the patterns or where, may, where these pieces may have come from, let me know. Leave them in, leave a comment with it below. This is one that I couldn't find the pattern for, so I'm not even really sure what it's for. If anybody recognizes it, let me know. Let me know the pattern. Um, if not, I just have a really nice piece of white Ada that I can use the bottom for, like a couple of ornaments or something. But I'm not really sure. Again, pristine stitching. Look at that, you guys. Pristine stitching. I'm not sure what pattern um, this was for. I couldn't find anything in any of the stuff that I had that would match this. So if anybody happens to know, I'm not even sure which way this goes. My guess is it goes that way. I'm not sure if it's ribbon, if it's like a Christmas ribbon and a wreath. I don't know. So if anybody can match this, that would be great. Let me know. I might actually want to finish that one. All right. So, let me go through a couple of the smaller things in here. So, this is an Elsa Williams Creative Cross Stitch Kit that was in the bag of whips that she had. Um, this was marked at $5.50. I'm not sure where she got it. Um, I think this one, this one was unopened. Yeah, actually, this kit is unopened. So this is an unopened Elsa Williams cross-stitch kit. I'm going to keep a hold of this because this is really cute. And it actually comes with the wood frame for finishing. Now, the wood frame in here isn't stained or anything. But if you look at the, the piece or the picture, the wood frame was stained when they took the model picture. So I don't know if you can stain it or paint it. But... Uh, comes with a nice wood frame. It comes with Ada fabric and comes with the floss and stuff. This kit contains charted design for white 100% cotton hardanger fabric. So this comes with hardanger. I'm guessing 22 count. Um, I'm not sure if hardanger, does hardanger come in other stuff? I don't know. Um, it, cotton embroidery floss. It doesn't say whether it's DMC. Needle, unfinished hardwood frame, outside measurement is four inch square and backing, easy instruction. So it has the frame, it has the cardboard backing, so you can put the uh, piece on it when you're done. Um, looking at this, um, the frame is deep enough that I can probably actually puff this out, make this a little puffy, like a little puffy pillow. That might actually be kind of cute that way, kind of make it puffy and stick out. I don't know. So I have a little Elsa Williams Christmas cross stitch kit to stitch at some point. This little Christmas kit is one that um, the lady had started, and I thought it was really cute, so I'm actually going to be um, keeping this and working on this myself. She paid $2.99 for it. Uh, I'm not sure where she got it, but it's the Mini Motif Winter Wonderland Christmas Counted Cross Stitch Kit. Kit includes graph, DMC thread, fabric, needle, and instructions. This is called Winter Wonderland. It's a little winter snow globe. And I can even see, without even opening it up, that you can see that she's actually done some of the stitching on the fabric. So when you open it up, this is really cute, a really cute one. I'm probably just going to put this in my pile of stuff to take with me. So this is the stitching that she's done on it so far. She's done a little bit of the blue snow globe in the background. Blue snow globe. Oops, this way. There you go. Yep. Um, this back isn't so nice. She just got started. She, you know, buried her thread. So she used one thread's worth, basically one thread worth of um, blue floss to do the background. So this is really cute. And I'm going to keep this. So this was, this was pretty, pretty well worth the money I spent. 
Um, she had another kit. Let me show you this. She had another kit in this same series that I don't believe she had started. I can double check. This one is Mini Motif Christmas Counter Cross Stitch Kit. A Christmas Wish for You. A Christmas Wish for You. She also paid $2.99 for this. It comes with the fabric and the floss. Um, I didn't open this up to see if she'd started this one, but I kind of thought not. Nope. There's nothing. no start on this. This one is pristine. Although the weird thing is, is this piece of Ada. I don't know if you're going to be... Oh, there we go. You see that yellowish, yellowish stuff at the top? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is, but it's yellow stuff. So this piece of Ada has a little bit of, um, I don't know, staining on it. That's the pattern. Yeah. So this one hasn't been started. So I have these two little kits. These are really cute. Um, these are going to go... Um, I may actually give this one away. This uh, free a Christmas gift for you. You know what? Actually, that, that, might be, that might be kind of a neat little Christmas giveaway. So I think I might actually give this one away. Um, but that didn't really give away stuff. Alright, so we have this little winter kit um, that is going in my whip pile to complete later. Um, Alright, I'll just start with this one. So, I remember, um, if you remember, a little bit ago I was telling you how the lady had the storage system for her um, floss, for her kits, whenever she was, um, whenever she was uh, using kits that came with floss, she would have her own system. So this was one of the um, first whips that I saw in the, the stash that I have. So I actually put this ring on here, but I found this I found this pile here of floss, and it was in the bottom of a bag, kind of all by itself. So it took me, um, the reason why I went through the stuff last night again is because I knew I had this pile of floss in here, and I needed to figure out if I had the kit or the project that this floss went to. And it turns out I had. So you can see this is the system, the system organization system and floss system that she was using. She would use these little, um, I'm not even sure where you can get these. I have a uh, container of them. Um, I don't know, this, this one came from a bank. But I have a container of all these little used um, little things like these all have numbers on them. There's a whole big thing of them in there you can see. Um, so I have some of her used um, things. I don't know how long she might have used this storage system for her floss, but it's, it's kind of cool. I don't think I would ever use this myself because I like the floss away bags too much. Um, they're just a lot handier than trying to, you know, pull the threads off. But I did happen to find out that this set of floss that is not DMC numbered, like you can see, um, well, you maybe can't see that. It's too bright in here. But like all the all the floss numbers in here um, start with either zero or six. DMC doesn't start with zero or six. Um, but anyway, so there was this uh, thing, this rolled up piece of fabric. She rolled hers around a lot of um, paper towel tubes and stuff for storage. Um, this one had the um, the actual outside of the kit part wrapped around it. So this first one that I came across, this first um, whip, it is called Cottage Quilts. This was a qu kit number 1674. This package contains kit number 1674 by the Creative Circle, South Broadway, Gardena, California. I'm not even sure if this is still a, a shop um, if you can even find this in Gardena California I might actually have to look up the address to see what's there now um, and maybe if they're still there maybe next time I go to California I can go go there and visit but this is um, 1674 cottage quilts and this could also have a 1680 calico hearts so this one happens to have 1674 cottage quilts designed by Donna Vermilion Giampa so I have a Donna Vermilion Giampa kit cottage quilts This is what it looks like. So 
Sorry, I'm trying to get it not so bent. Ah! There you go. And it is the pattern. It's a large pattern. It's a big one sheet, one sheet pattern. And it looks like it has, yeah, it has all the, um, it has the stitching pattern on one side and the back stitching pattern on the other side. But it's all one big piece of paper. And um, it came with these floss. Um, I don't think it says what kind of floss. Two kind of embroidery floss number four twenty number twenty four tapestry needle graph and instructions. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, I was kind of excited. I was kind of wondering when I first opened this one up. This was the first whip that I opened up when I got home. Um, it didn't have the floss with it. I had to find the floss separately. But this is all the floss that came with the kit. And um, I was kind of curious. I wasn't sure if this lady had started this or not. But um, I have a. this is a rather large piece of Ada fabric. Um... It's a rather large piece. It's a long piece. She did indeed start start this piece. There's actually a stain on that. Huh. Hmm. Might have to see if that, that'll come out. Or I might have to stitch something over it. But anyway, so she did start this piece. She did make a little teeny start. Um, she did some of the tree. And it looks like the chimney on the house. So she did a little bit of the tree up here and the chimney on the house. That's what it looks like to me. So she did start it. She didn't get very far on it. But this is a Donna Vermilion Giampa pattern. And I actually love Donna Vermilion Giampa. And she has passed away. So you're going to hear me rant about this a little bit later. Um, she, used masking, she used masking tape on one edge of her fabric to... Um, stop the fraying and then she used scotch tape on the top I'm gonna get on my soapbox here you guys and uh, Actually, she used masking tape on the other edge, too um, I'm gonna get on my soapbox here and uh, being a stitcher and Learning back in the 80s. I was taught very early on that you never never use masking tape on any of your pieces of cross stitch. The masking tape gets old, it yellows, it discolors, it sticks, it becomes tacky, and it leaves residue on everything. This lady had put masking tape on quite a few of her whips. One of the whips that I'm really kind of sad that she did it on is a um, another Amish scenery piece with quilts in it and I'm gonna finish stitching that one for sure and she had put masking tape all around it so I spent about 15 or 20 minutes last night pulling the masking tape off of the project it's on blue even weave fabric really nice a really beautiful piece of like stormy blue fabric she put masking tape on it and I spent about 10 or 15 minutes last night pulling the masking tape off the edge of the fabric and it left a sticky residue I was so kind of upset I'm like you know if she was if she stitched as beautifully as she stitched I'm really surprised she didn't know not to use masking tape this is my soapbox thing people don't use masking tape to fray check to stop fraying of your cross stitch fabric do not do it please please don't do masking tape to keep your fabric from fraying go to joann's or michael's or a craft store fabric store whatever go get fray block go get fray check whatever you need to do borrow somebody's sewing machine have somebody that you know that sews and has a sewing machine have them zigzag the fabric for you take it somewhere and see if um you know the the sewing area at joann's see if you can borrow a sewing machine and serge it um 
to try out some of the do whatever you can but do not use masking tape please save us all do not use masking tape masking tape this masking tape here I'm gonna leave this because it's kit fabric um <laughs> please don't use masking tape of all things just don't use masking tape you'd be better off leaving it fray um, than using masking tape don't do it please please don't so that, that's enough of my soapbox so the first kit that I have here is the Donna the Million Giampa 1674 cottage quilts kit I do have all the fabric in the I do have the fabric in the floss um, so I will probably be finishing this sometime soon um, or at least working on it. This might go to my cross stitch retreat with me next weekend. Um, so yeah, we have that. Kit number one, or wit number one. All right. Put that over here. All right. This is another little teeny kit that she had. That was really cute. It was just kind of bundled up in this little bag. She had a lot of stuff bundled up. Her um, method of storage, she liked to roll everything, which is kind of nice. I, I might actually start doing that myself. But this one is called, it's by Shaker Workshop. It's by Shaker Workshop. Um, this is Candid Cross Stitch. Um, it has graph, even weave fabric, DMC floss, and tapestry needle. Um, this is just a little note for stitch it. And this particular piece, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I can at least show you this part of it. This particular piece is called the basket, basket of apples. Okay. Basket of apples. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but this is what she got started. She started on the top border. Basket of apples. And then here's the DMC floss. The yellow is the the most that's used. Basically, it's a basket and it has apples in it. <laughs> basket of apples. But, so this is where she. This is how much she got done. Um, I'm gonna keep a hold of this because it's shaker, and um, I'll probably finish stitching it. Um, unless somebody out there says, you know, oh my gosh, they really really want it. Um, I'll probably keep a hold of this one and finish stitching it. So, um, anyway, if, if you do happen to say you really want, if there's anything in here, except for a couple of them, and I will let you know which ones I'm keeping for sure, um, like this, you know, if you decide that you, you would like to finish it, um, just, you know, say, say something like, I would like to finish, I would like to finish the shaker basket or something like that. And, uh, I'll make a make arrangements with you, but yeah, that was I thought that was pretty cute, and we still have quite a bit more, you guys. Um, let me get to some of these. All right, I'll pull some of these out. There's quite a bit. Here's another kit that she had used some of. This is Carolina Cross Stitch Incorporated Christmas Pass Christmas Carols. So we have the guitar and gold bells, and then the carolers. Um, this kit, ooh, that's really nice. Actually, that's really, well, you can see that she had done one of them because the fabric is cut out. This is gorgeously soft fabric. I don't think I have ever felt fabric this soft before. Good night. What kind of fabric is this? Cross stitch kit, actual size. Instruments and carolers. Um, designs in the Scandinavian tradition. Designs are worked on even weave Ada or hardanger material from color coded charts. So, Carolina Cross Stitch apparently. Oh. So, these are apparently all the different kits that you can get through Carolina Cross Stitch. Huh. A catalog, just a catalog of all their different kits. In case you're wondering, Carolina Cross Stitch, it's a list, a kit list of everything you can get 
from Carolina Cross Stitch Inc., Post Office Box 469, Laurenburg, North Carolina. I'm not sure if Carolina Cross Stitch is still even in business. You may be able to look them up. But she stitched one of these. Not entirely sure which one she stitched. Um, is that the pattern? Where is the pattern still in here? I didn't take this out and look at it. Counted cross stitch. Okay, well these patterns are uh, on little separate cards like this. Kind of weird. I'm sorry that I'm sniffling, you guys. I'm dealing with a little bit of a head cold. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure, but I have the patterns for both of them. She did one of them. But this is the softest ding hardanger fabric I think I have ever come across, you guys. This, oh my god, if you could feel this, this is like soft. Well, I'm keeping this one. I wasn't sure I was going to, but I'm going to keep this and um, probably use the other fabric. And once I'm done with it, once I'm done um, stitching this, I'm probably going to end up stitching the guitar and the bells. Although the carolers are cute too. Um, it, we only have one of the metal frames. I'm assuming it came with two because there were two in here. Um, and it also has a thread, thread sorter. But yeah, this was $5.98 from the Windsor Button Shop. $5.98 from the Windsor Button Shop. Um, this is a cute little kit. So, um, she hadn't started a second one in this yet. Um, but I'm probably going to use the fabric see how I like it. That is the softest piece of hardanger. Oh, come on, you. It's not exactly easy to get put back in the bag. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. Make sure the fabric and the floss get put back in here. All right. Over here with my um, this next piece is one of the ones that I couldn't identify. Um, this kind of had me as a rant, going on a rant last night because if you look closely, the entire thing has masking tape all around it. Don't use masking tape on your projects, pretty please, please don't. But yeah, I couldn't identify what this came from. This is really cute. I like the sun and I'm not really sure what this came from so if anybody out there knows what pattern this is for let me know this is just a piece of cream Ada it's 14 count and I'm not sure what design this came from so if anybody out there can identify this design just by what's stitched here let me know again her stitching was clean so we have um, two patterns that I couldn't identify and a couple of finished patterns like these quilt blocks that I couldn't identify either. So if anybody out there would know what those patterns are, just let me know. So this is a Dale Burdett Country Christmas Cross Stitch Kit Raggedy Ann and Andy. Paid $1.50 for it from Ames. Um, so the floss is in here, the little finishing, um, lace, the finishing strand of lace. She actually got quite a bit done. I'm actually really impressed. I'm probably going to finish this too. Raggedy Ann and Andy. You can see her stitching on the back, which is quite nice. Raggedy Ann and Andy. So she was she was pretty far. Although what's really weird is this Christmas one, the picture, it shows up green. So oh it has the hoop. You have the finishing hoop. Little teeny oval finishing hoop. That's really cute. And we have the little white ribbon. The little white ribbon that goes on there is right down here. The little white ribbon for tying onto the top. The finishing hoop. So we have everything to finish it, including, you know, the actual piece itself. We have the finishing instructions. We have the DMC color. Here's the chart. Oh, she made a working copy of the chart. She enlarged her charts. She enlarged her charts. 
Um, this is her working copy. I don't know if she swapped out the greens for the blues or what she did. Yeah, she swapped out the greens for the blues. So this calls for 987 green and 989 light green. She swapped 987 for 987 green for 797 blue and 989 light green for 799 799 light blue. So she's using 797 and 7, 799 in place of the green. I'm gonna have to keep in touch or keep a hold of her working copy so I know what she's using because um, she swapped the colors out to make them more traditionally blue, like uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy. Whoops, wrong side. Rag Raggedy Ann and Andy. That's really cute, though. And it comes with a finishing hoop. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. Um, I just let the phone ring. Um, we're not home during the week normally anyway, so for the, for us to answer the phone in the middle of the week um, ain't going to happen. They can call back at night to talk to us, or they can call one of our cell phones if they have it. If not, we don't necessarily want to talk to them. Um, yeah, so I had this guy call me today, and they happened to answer the phone, and he asked to speak to my husband. I said, well, you know, my husband's at work. Um, can I leave a message? And he's like, well, and he kind of tried to browbeat me to get me to make a change to our gas plan. And I'm like, no, you really need to talk to my husband. I could have probably dealt with it. I would have just told him, no, don't call back. But he kept insisting that, you know, we had a thing with him and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, he was just calling to rectify it. And so we wouldn't like get higher gas rates and blah, blah, blah. And he tried to browbeat me. And I'm just like, buddy, listen, that is something that my husband's going to make the decision on. I don't know what kind of system he had you, had set up with you, but yeah, no. Um, yeah. If I don't want to talk to you, I'm not going to talk to you. And so usually, usually if I'm home during the day, unless I know it's my husband calling, um, I won't answer the phone. I'll just let it ring. Or answer it and then hang it back up, you know. So, yeah, I've done that before. Because I don't really need to talk to you. If uh, if I wanted to talk to you, A, I would call you myself. Or B, I would, uh, anyway. So, enough about that. <laughs> so, yeah. Raggedy Ann and Andy. This is really cute. Um, this was another kit that she actually didn't start. But this was in the pile of stuff. This is Creative Moments Charted Design for Needlework. This is called Design Number 686 Stitching Banner. A creative product from Dunfield Incorporated, Post Office Box, Marietta, Georgia. Let's see if I can get up close enough. I don't know if it'll. I don't know if it will show up, if I maybe take it out. Here we go. I will cross that stitch when I come to it. It's a little banner. This one she hadn't started, but it did come with a nice piece of nice piece of fabric. Came with a nice piece of cream colored fabric. And it came with the floss. It came with the floss and it came with the hardware for hanging and the gold and the gold loopy thing for the loop at the top, the hanging loop. So yeah, I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna keep a hold of this because I think this is cute. I will cross that stitch when I get to it. That is a great sentiment, and one that I uphold very well, and that I believe in. So this is a kit that I'm keeping for sure. Hasn't been started yet, but nonetheless, it's a cute kit. So yeah, all right, try and speed this up just a little bit, you guys. All right, this is the next uh, finish that actually I was a little surprised about. Um, this piece was originally published in the Country Handcrafts Autumn Magazine. This is from 1983, Copyright 1983. This came out of the Country Handcrafts Autumn 1983 Magazine. Now keep in mind a lot of these whips, um, a lot of the 
fabric was separated from a lot of the patterns. So I actually had to go through some of the stuff I had to match up to see if I had all the, all the patterns. And most of the whips that I picked out, most of the whips, except for the four that I showed earlier, well, I have one more coming up, but um, I found the patterns. So this is called Winter Fun Cross Stitch Picture. Winter Fun Cross Stitch Picture. This is the only cross stitch piece in this magazine. And she stitched it on blue Ada. Now I am guessing at one point in time she had sorry my nose is itching you guys. Uh, sorry at one point in time I'm guessing that she had put masking tape at the edge of her fabric. You guys this is why Please don't put masking tape on the edge of your fabric. I don't know if you can see that, but you see how badly discolored the edge of the fabric is? You see how badly discolored it is? You guys, don't, don't use masking tape, please. So anyway, this is how much of this pattern she has. I'm keeping this for my stash, and I will be working on this myself. <laughs> This is really cute. Again, this is Winter Fun Cross Stitch Picture. Um, does it say who it was by? Um, Lois's Winter Scene. I don't know who Lois is. I don't know who Lois is. Um, if anybody knows who Lo happens to know who Lois is, I, I probably... We could probably look it up. I might put it in the video later. But anyway, so here is another whip. But yes, I'm going to say it once more. Please don't put masking tape around your projects. You can see how discolored the edges are. That's masking tape discoloration, you guys. That's all masking tape discoloration down here. And it's stiff. It's not exactly pretty. Yeah. Don't put masking tape on your projects, please. All right. So, there's that. All right. All right, I have to speed this up just a little bit. Oh, and the other thing that was cool is this was in an old Cross My Heart Counted Cross Stitch bag. These are old bags. These were before. This is about tw these bags are from about 20 years ago. So, um, anyway, this pattern was from 1983. So, yeah, it's been a while since this has probably been started. Um, then we have another Cross My Heart Cross Stitch bag from a long time ago. This one was kind of cool. So, she had taken um, a Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine. Where's the cover? No, that's not the cover. Where is the cover? There we go. This is Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, May, June 1993 issue. She was working on these. These. This issue has the bottom six in it. Okay. The one that's currently in a wit as in a partially complete pro process is the harp. You can see the harp. The harp. That's the one that's partially completed. Sorry, that was blurry. It would be this one here. This one here. So, here's her bundle of floss. She had put the floss on a Lorraine floss card. Here's the colors that she was using for it. She has most of them done. There are 12 in this series. The first six, according to this, the first six were published in the March-April 93 issue. The first six. The second six it is 7 to 12. And then in the July-August 93 issue, 
the border came out. So, here's what she has. This is the first square that was complete. The second square. The third square. The fourth square. The fifth square. The sixth square. The seventh square. Impeccable stitching. All of these have impeccable stitching on the back. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Impeccable stitching. Um, and then here's the one that she was working on. This is the heart. So, um, since she has some finishes, I'm probably going to make these into just little pillow ornaments. Or just little pillows and stick them in a basket or something. I'm going to do something with these at some point. Um, but yeah, there's that. I'm actually just going to kind of put all of this in the bag to save a little bit of time and not worry about it. So I have that. Uh, this is going to be over an hour, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, then I think that's it for everything. Then we have the last bit. Yep. All right. So then we have this last bit. You can see there's several projects in here. All right. I'll go with this one. Make sure. Yes, that's the one. Yes. All right. So this one, I'm not going to, I can't show you that part. This was an Elsa Williams Anne Green Sampler Stitchery. Anne Green Sampler Stitchery. Kit number 29102. Finished piece 11 by 14 plaque. Dear Needleworker, this counter crossed sampler is interpreted from a sampler dated 1827, now in the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation collection. The antique sampler pictured here was stitched by Anne Philip Green when she was seven years old. It is long and narrow, 11 by 20 and a half, and features cross-stitched embroidery and multicolored linen thread on hand-spun and woven linen. Fanciful elements, flowers, birds, and hearts have been taken from the original and rearranged to suit this 11 by 14 size counted cross-stitch sampler from Johnson Creative Arts. So it lists the original, it lists the original sampler right there. And it tells you a little bit about it. So this is kind of cool. Um, let me set this back up the actual way. So we have the floss. Um, the floss that came with the kit. Very nice pastel greens and pinks and blues. A little bit of gray, some cream and white. Very nice pastel colors. I know, is this DMC? It doesn't say. No, it wouldn't be DMC. It has the um, the stitching on it has um, numbers starting in 6,000. I don't know if you can see that. 6,000. Okay. So this is when she started. Look at this, you guys. This is quite beautiful. I actually like the colors in this a lot. This is what she's got done on it. She's done some of the back stitching on the bricks. On the house. It's beautiful. It's on hard hanger. It doesn't look like she, um, I don't think she edged it in masking tape, thank goodness. But beautiful stitching. Look at that. Look how pristine the stitching is on this, you guys. She was a good stitcher. All right, so we have the Elsa Williams and Green Sampler Stitchery Kit. This is coming with me. So there's that, um, there's that. Next, 
I'm going to take out these two. Um, she was a Prairie Schooler fan. She had this Santa, Prairie Schooler Santa. Uh, I'm not even sure what number this was. She paid 50 cents for the pattern. This is how much she stitched on it. This is her back. I'm keeping that. This was a small little kit that she had got. Country Hearts Just For You. Country Hearts Just For You. This is how much was stitched on it. And it looks like these. Are, this is done with uh, specialty stitches. It looks like there's specialty stitches in here. Oh, that is white. So what I thought might have been um, is white stitching. I'm keeping a hold of that because that's kind of cute. And it comes with comes with the floss, so I have the floss too. That's kind of nice. This fabric is really soft. It's an even weave of some sort. I think it's mushroom lagana or something. It's very soft fabric. All right. So there's a little kit. Okay, this next one kind of surprised me. And this next one I'm probably not going to keep, even though it's a told in a garden. I'm just showing you the, the thing. It's a told in a garden pattern, but it was a kit. Um, I'm probably not going to keep this, but I know somebody that I'm going to contact first to see if they'd be willing to take it. Um, you guys all know Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching. And you know that Pam really loves Maine. Um, this is the Told in a Garden. Told in a Garden. Well, you just do this. This is the Told in a Garden. The main sampler. Okay? The main sampler by Tolna Garden. This was a kit. This is what it looks like. You're not going to be able to see the white letters very well at the, the top, but the letters at the top up here say Kennebunkport, Maine. Okay? I'm not I, I'm not a fan of Maine. I love Told in the Garden. I don't know. I'm going to contact Pam to see if she might want this. But um, I don't know. So this is what this is what the lady had completed on it. You can see it says Kennebunkport, Maine. That's as far as she's got. Now if Pam of um, just keeps stitching would like this, I'm going to just send it to her um, if she thinks she would finish it um, but if not um, I'm gonna put this in my stash for a little while until like figure out what to do with it um, this may go on stash and load this may be a giveaway because it's told a gar told in a garden pattern I'm not sure how, how rare this pattern is um, but yeah so there's told in a garden main sampler This one, okay. So this next one, Kitchen Sampler by Deborah Lam Lambian. It's a Leisure Arts leaflet, Kitchen Sampler. It's not, there we go. This is where she's where she's got done. This one's really cute. Um, it's a little more country than I than I'm used to than any of the decor in my home. 
Um, I'm going to hold on to this for a little while, unless, of course, somebody says, you know, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to stitch that. Um, I'm not sure if any of these pieces are going up on uh, Adopt a Whip or not. Um, they may. I don't know. Um, but yeah, kitchen sampler. If you desperately want to stitch kitchen sampler, just tell me that you'd like to stitch the kitchen sampler and um, I'll be in contact with you and we can make arrangements. But um, if nobody says anything, I'm just I'm just probably going to keep this in my stash. But uh, for now, anyway. Um, all right. What's this one? Oh, yes. It took me a little bit of time to figure this one out, but this is Spring Beauties, Four Designs by Donna Richardson. This is a leisure arts design. The one that the lady is stitching is this one here with the petunias and the butterflies. I think those are petunias. So she's stitching this. And here's where she got. This is on Cream Ada. Or and no, it's Cream Ada. It's got to be Cream Ada. So she has one of the, she has this part of the flower done and part of the red and the petunia. Show it to you again. This one it took me a little bit to find the pattern for. This is Jamlin Christmas Cross Stitch Leaflet 978-04 Santa Stocking. She got this from Covered Bridge Needle Art Needle Craft for three bucks. Covered Bridge Needle Craft in Nashua, New Hampshire. If Covered Bridge Needle Craft is still in business, somebody let me know. If you've been to Covered Bridge Needlecraft, let me know. Let me know what you think. Here's where she got. I don't. It, she didn't say. I don't. I don't know that it says. Um. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know if it says in here who she might be stitching it for. Yeah, you know, I have a lot of her working copies. I don't know if she was stitching it for anybody in particular. I don't think she charted it out yet who she was stitching it for yeah she hadn't charted it out yet but here's where she got here's the back still a really clean back We have two more, you guys. This next one, this is the one that I took the masking tape off of. And uh, please don't put masking tape on your stuff, you guys. Sorry, it's a big, it's a big pet peeve of mine. So this last one in here, before I get to the piece de resistance, this is Winter Star Leisure Arts Leaflet 685, Book Two by Sheila Tune Upham. Upham, 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 whatever. So, luckily this hasn't discolored yet, but the edges are tacky now because this is the piece I took the masking tape off of. You can see the edges are kind of tacky. See, the edges are sticking together. Okay. This is as much as she got done. It's a beautiful piece of stormy blue-gray fabric. And I believe it's some of the dark, some of the dark stuff up here in the sky. I'm keeping this one. A, because I think the fabric is beautiful, and B, because I actually kind of like the pattern. Even though quilts aren't my thing, I really like this pattern, so I'm probably just going to keep this, put it in my whip pile, and work on it. 
again. Really nice stitchy back. All right, you guys, this is the last one, and we're going on just, this is going to be a little over an hour. I'm sorry about that, but I hope you've enjoyed the whips. Um, before I get to the, whoops, that goes with the main sampler. Put that back in there. Oh, the main sampler came with the threads. They're shorter lengths, which is really kind of weird. Um, I would have figured they would have been cut in longer lengths, but they're really short lengths. Really beautiful colors, blues and peaches and dark greens and a dark gray. Really pretty. It's just, I have no tie to mane. Um, so, there was this piece. I had another, um, there was another started whip that I couldn't find a pattern for. And I'm not really sure I want to know the pattern to this because this, look at this piece of linen, you guys. This is linen. It's a cream or antique white linen. But look at this piece a nice big piece of linen and this is what was started on it it's some sort oops let me show you the right side it's some sort of thing there's a little teeny motif up here in this corner I don't know what this was for but I'm probably gonna frog it I'm gonna frog what's in here and use the fabric for something else because I have something else I can use this with. So I have a nice piece of linen fabric with something started on it. I don't know what this was. If anybody can identify what this might be with the little teeny pink um, motif in the corner and the corner block there, if anybody can identify what it might be, let me know. I might actually have a pattern for it, but it doesn't ring a bell. So, anyway, so this is another piece that I, I don't know what, um, what fabric or what thing it goes with. All right, so now we have the piece de resistance, you guys. The thing I was most excited about that drew my attention because it was off by itself, marked for two bucks, kind of pretty much just like this, stuffed into something else. Just like this, wrapped in a bag. I picked it up. I took a look at the bag. I looked inside this bag here. Saw the fabric. I saw the fabric. Felt how amazingly soft this fabric is. And I was like, hmm, okay. There was some, she had made some working copies of the pattern. The working copy was outside. Took a look to look at the working copy. Saw the quilt on the pattern. Then I saw the word blueberry. <coughs> Those of you that know, that have watched the other video, know that the lady had quite a big stash of told in a garden patterns. She was a quilter, so obviously she's going to have a lot of the quilting patterns from Toll in the Garden. Toll in the Garden has a blueberry blueberry morning pattern out. It said blueberries, had stitching on it. I was like, oh, there's a working copy, and my guess is this is her. This is her whip. I'm just going to buy it for two bucks and see what I get. I threw away the working copies because I don't need them. She enlarged them to make the stitches bigger. But, uh, so, out of everything else, I'm sorry, it has, it's called Blueberry Homecoming, not Blueberry Morning or Blueberry Muffin. I always want to call it Blueberry Muffin or Blueberry Morning or whatever. Blueberry Homecoming by Told in the Garden. This is the original kit, the original pattern. This one's the original pattern. Yep, Blueberry Homecoming. I was blown away, you guys. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to match the floss on this. Um, I don't think any of that floss was for this. Is there blue? No. 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 Alright. It wasn't for this. She had her floss somewhere else. 
you guys, when I took this out, it was rolled up. It's rolled up on a um, paper towel roll, cardboard paper towel roll. You guys, this is the softest dang fabric. The softest dang fabric. It has a beautiful drape. Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't know what kind of fabric it is. This is on cream fabric. Beautiful dang fabric. This is what she has done. Are you... Are you dead on the floor? This is not for auction. This is not for giveaway. This is not for sale. I'm going to try my best to match the floss um, things. But yes. Are you dead on the floor? So, that being said, those are my whips. Um, this is just over an hour. I'm sorry about the length. I hope you guys enjoyed my whip parade. Um, if any of you can tell me information about some of those other patterns that I couldn't locate, that I don't know the names of for the four pieces. Give me just a minute and I will show them to you again. Um, the ones that I'm curious, kind of curious about, there's this one. Um, there's this cute little sunrise or sunset piece. If anybody can identify that. And then there's the two finished quilt blocks. If anybody can identify these, let me know. I'd be greatly appreciative. Um, if there's anything you think you can't absolutely live without, um, get in contact with me. Leave a comment below. I will get in touch with you. Maybe we can make arrangements. Um, there's some of this stuff I'm going to keep. Some of this stuff I'll probably either put up on um, Adopt-A-Whip or whatnot, but that's about all I got for you today. I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you guys have a happy Halloween. Um, just let me know. Yeah, I was, I'm was i pretty blown away with everything that I got at that estate sale for like 80 bucks. Um, between the Toldner Garden patterns, the P. Buckley Moss patterns, the Paula Vaughn patterns, all the other patterns, and the whips especially, I was pretty blown away. So, anyway, if you're out there, Thanks, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. I've had quite a few new subscribers lately. Um, please leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like or dislike. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And also, if you can tell me anything about any of the pieces that I showed you today, just let me know. I'd be interested to hear anything that you have to say. So, thanks a lot. I hope you guys have a happy Halloween. We're supposed to trick or do, have a trick-or-treat night tonight night um, around Columbus, but we're supposed to get heavy rain between 6 and 8.30 p.m. when everybody's supposed to be out trick-or-treating, so I don't know how that's going to go over. We're giving out full-size candy bars and comic books, so um, hopefully if you're in the area, I'll see ya. All right, if not, have a great week. I'm not sure when my next video will be up. Um, I have a couple of new things to show you, but um, yeah, other than that, I really don't have a whole lot. So anyway, take care, keep on keeping on, and stitch all the things, buy all the things. Go to estate sales if you can. And uh, one last time, don't use masking tape. All right, so anyway, take care, and we'll keep in touch, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, bye.